It's time again for Fundamentals of Car Audio, brought to you by DNF Tool Drawer, the place you can go and find all the cool tools that we use for installation. And that's right, it's Fundamentals. All right, let me launch this. Gerardo, yes, uh, we are going. All right, so the idea behind this is someone asked last week if we could briefly, like, what, what is the difference between this and that, all right? And so, this is gonna be the basic differences between the types of amplifier classes, all right? Now, a lot of people don't understand. A, B, A, B, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, there is a amplifier in each one of those. However, what you have to keep in mind is that they're not all for audio. There are many types of amplifiers and classes. They range from A to H and every letter in between. When a class is created, it uses a new letter available. I'm sorry, it uses the next letter available. We're on <laughs> H. A few misconceptions. Class A is just the first type of amplifier. It is not the best. A lot of people will argue that point, but it's just something to keep in mind. Class D was just the next class. It does not mean digital. Most common amplifier classes in car audio is A, A, B, D, G, and H. Rockford, they have all their own, so we won't even get involved with those. A class A, very inefficient. It keeps all the output devices on all the time. Change your screen, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, my bad. I meant to do that. Hey. I meant to go there. Sorry. Sorry, guys. It keeps all the output devices on all the time, meaning that if it draws 30 amps, it will always draw 30 amps. It never, never doesn't. It's always on. It's always on 100%. It is known for running very hot and some kind, sometimes called a room heater. It is also very clean amplifier with no distortion at the crossover point. Now, we're going to stop right here for a second because I have to explain what the crossover point is. That green arrow there that says crossover point. That is the actual crossover point in audio. What is on your amplifier that you often refer to as a high pass, low pass crossover is actually a high pass, low pass filter. When you talk to an engineer that designs amplifiers and you refer to the crossover, he's assuming that you're talking about where your positive wave and negative wave cross over the zero line, not the filter. So for the rest of this, we'll be referring to the crossover point as where the positive and negative wave cross over the zero point, all right? So that's, that's what that little thing there says. All right, they also need, they, they also need a large heat sink per watt. So typically your class A amplifiers are gonna be rather big and bulky and heavy and hot. That's why we don't use them that often in car, in, in car audio anymore. Class AB. There was a Class B. However, it did not sound very good. There, were, there is distortion at the crossover point. It was more efficient than a Class A because the output devices would turn on and off. The problem was no overlap at the crossover point. A Class AB fixes that with crossover bias. This kept the positive and negative output devices on for a small amount of a small amount above and below the crossover point. This fixed the sound this fixed the sound of the amplifier. So what you're seeing in the image there is that you have the red positive and the blue negative and the zero line down the center and you see them they stay on for just a second. Or not really a second, just a tad. We'll call it a tad because we don't want to refer to it as time. And this would fix the problem with the class B. And because the output devices turn on and off, that makes the amplifier obviously more efficient than a class A amplifier. In our world, the next thing is class D. This class of amp was a big improvement in efficiency by using pulse width modulation. It breaks the single, it breaks the signal into smaller pulses to create the single wave and that's what this diagram is showing there this is also the one trait that gives it a bad rap the complaint is this does not sound natural and or as clean as class a b class d has come 
a long way over the years, and now with higher inversions, telling the difference might not be easy. I put that might not in there because some of you guys will be like, oh, I can tell. Good on you. They typically have a smaller heat sink than class AB. As you can see, what is happening is A, B, D. Next up is a new category of amplifiers, class G, class H. This type of amplifier is based off another class of amplifier, meaning this wouldn't exist without class AB. It claims to be more efficient than class AB and depending on how it is, in you, and depending on how it is used, can be. It uses a dual power supply, one low and one high. The lower output is used, uh, used the low power supply to create sound using less power. When the sound becomes more dynamic, it switches to the higher power supply. If using the high power supply, the efficiency becomes that of a regular class B amplifier. In the diagram down below, you see the HPV uh, DD LV, which is low, and then the HV, which is high. At normal listening levels, it's going to use that low power output uh, power supply. As soon as you crank that thing up, it's going to boost the rails back out and give you full power. That's how it's more efficient. There's still smaller heat sinks. This amp is so the class H is also known as a rail tracker and actually very similar to a class G. Similar but not the same. They, the end result is the same. How they achieve it is a, typical, is a little bit different because it's riding the rails as opposed to the, the power supplies. Uh, this is, uh, most of these two amplifiers will be grouped together. There are only slight differences between the two designs. Uh, they typically have a smaller heat sink than class AB. Hmm. I know, right? And there you go. And that is, that's the end of that. Now we all know.